Hello everyone, my name is Kim and my voice sounds much better and natural in real life than recording. Today I want to talk to you about how Vietnamese people we came from square to ABC Latin or the creation of Chữ Quốc Ngữ, the Vietnamese Romanized script. Uh, I will talk about the transition from the Chinese and Chinese lookalike script to the new Romanized script. I also talk about the involvement of the Society of Jesus uh, in this uh, amazing journey. I want to press about the influence of the Portuguese uh, group and also one particular uh, French uh, missionary, Alex Nurods. So before the arrival of the Jesuits in the 17th century in Vietnam, we have two scripts. The first one is the Chinese script. Chữ Hán from the Hán dynasty of China, or we call it Chữ Nho, the, the script for the literature. So when we indicate it's for the literature, we use Chinese script in formal writing. The king would use it for royal proclamation, edicts. And also, we trying to learn and understand big philosophy back then was trendy, which is Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. In the meantime, we also uh, develop along the way the so-called Vietnamese script or Chữ Nam, and it's still a Chinese localized script because the idea we would borrow two Chinese character first to indicate a meaning and second to indicate a pronunciation. The idea is like Vietnamese language is not uh, similar to Chinese. We have six tongues. Chinese people have four tongues. We need a new script to reserve our language. And however, we use this uh, genome, the Vietnamese script, to write in a very informal and vernacular way. We would have formal, uh, informal vernacular poem, and we would have the Google Translate version of Chinese literature in uh, Vietnamese script or Vietnamese language, uh, which we try to explain the philosophy of Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism in a way that Vietnamese people would understand. Uh, both of the literature we have to, to learn back then was in poem verses or in a very freestyle verses. And we never mix together the two uh, literature. We never mix Chinese with Vietnamese. We never mix Chinese script with Vietnamese script. However, we were, we have what would be called Sino-Vietnamese. So Sino-Vietnamese means we imported directly some Chinese words, some Chinese character into the, the vocabulary, the, the language of Vietnamese. But we would sell, uh, we would try to sell, to, to make it sound very, very Vietnamese, uh, uh, maybe a Chinese, when they hear, they hear we pronounce the word, they would not understand. So that's what I call Sino-Vietnamese sounds or Sino-Vietnamese words. It's uh, complicated the scenes and um, back then it was a great and the biggest effort trying to master first Chinese language and then later the norm script. So in the past, Vietnamese uh, men would marry very very early. 13, 14 years old to women so that women can take care of business uh, handling the financial and uh, the men would have more time and effort trying to remember all the Chinese literature or the Chinese character in order to take part in um, Vietnam Got Talent back then an examination created by the king the idea is to test whether we can use um, the uh, Chinese language to, to help the king to write uh, edicts or proclamation and to teach philosophy uh, in Chinese and to Vietnamese. Uh, and uh, let's pause here. And uh, if my king ever sit down and, and think about it, I think uh, what really bothered me is like, why the king and why my ancestor never sit down and um, think like why don't they put some elegant voice or elegant register to the Vietnamese language and try to cut loose uh, the influence of Chinese literature, Chinese influence 
to the Vietnamese language. Why can they make the norm or the Vietnamese script more elegant, more, more formal and use it for, for proclamation or for verdict? Why do we need to have an exam? Vietnam got talent to understand Chinese language. That's what bothered me. And that came the Portuguese or uh, the missionary uh, from, from, uh, from Japan. So uh, the, the Society of Jesus uh, already developed what's called Roman Z in Japan mission and also Chinese mission. They were trying to Romanize local language saying Chinese or Japanese and then they brought together that idea to Vietnam. But before that, they would do some sort of testing the weather, the water, and I would call it a transcription phase. So for the transcription way, we would have uh, in the group of, um, of uh, Jesuit, uh, Italian, Portuguese, thus we have the in Italian transcription, and that is the first ever sentence, the, the Society of Jesus You trying to convince uh, Vietnamese people to to become Christian, but they ended up mistaken it and go around to all the village asking people, hey, do you want to reborn as a Portuguese? Later, they fix it into, hey, do you want to become Christian? Please read my paper for more information about it. And then we have the Portuguese group who, who later, the transcription became the Romanization or the new uh, Romanized Vietnamese authority. And the French missionary Alexander Rose used this system of Romanized uh, writing to to do two things. But before we we come to Alexander Rose, let's talk about the Portuguese. Did they do the whole transcription Romanization on purpose or accidentally or casually? Uh, in my paper, I would uh, present some evidence that uh, the Portuguese group had a very clear strategy, have a clear vision why they want to do this and what they, they would do to, in order to achieve the Romanization, how they learn the Vietnamese language. And then we have Alexander Rowe, the French, um, the French missionary under the influence of the Portuguese group. Uh, he did two things, which he, again he later uh, the honor to be be uh, to to have street name after him right now in Vietnam. I live in Ho Chi Minh City, and in the central of Ho Chi Minh City, there's a street named after him. Uh, he did two things. First thing, he published the first ever Vietnamese Portuguese Latin dictionary. When I say publish, I mean he gather all the data, all the manuscript from mostly the Portuguese group, and also add up the Latin part. And publish it as a dictionary and he credited very clear on the preface to Portuguese missionary Antonio Barbosa and also Gaspar do Amaro. The second thing he did was to wrote a Vietnam catechism. This is his old creation with the assistant and the help of the Vietnamese local. So this is his catechism. He wrote it in Latin and also in Vietnamese, introducing to the world the first ever Vietnamese Romanite uh, system. And what's interesting about the uh, catechism is that in the past, uh, with the Chinese and Vietnamese literature, it all written in poem or verses, but this for the first time were written in prose. So actually, this must be the first ever Western Bay critical essay written in Vietnamese language, uh, which gave the Vietnamese language uh, um, uh, one more layer to consider the development of the language. Also, he did something else. Uh, his word choice. He want to call Jesus in Vietnamese language. And he had so many, many options to do so. He could try to sell elegant, he could try to sell formal by using Sino Vietnamese, the shared uh, vocabulary uh, between Chinese elegant one and the Vietnamese. He could easily call Jesus the Lord of Sky and Earth or the Lord of Heaven as Chúa Thiên Địa or Chúa Thiên Đường 
However, he didn't do so. He tried to bring Jesus close to the crowd. He tried to make Jesus everybody body. That's why he turned into the vernacular Vietnamese, uh, meaning the norm language, the norm script. And he chose the word trời đất. Trời means the sky and đất means the earth. And together, he combined uh, the Lord. Uh, he used very formal uh, in sign of Vietnamese and trời đất vernacular. And he called Jesus Chúa trời đất. So that's something very interesting in my finding, and I, I, I wrote more example about it in my paper. Conclusion. So when the Jesus came, we used a native language to transcribe the Vietnamese language. Thus, we have the Italian and Portuguese transcription of Vietnamese language. And then the Portuguese group managed to create the Romanized authority system. Their strategy uh, should be for, uh, further under, uh, question to understand, starting with Francisco de Pina, the, the first Portuguese with a Vietnamese tongue. He was very, very fluent in Vietnamese, and he was the one who taught Alexander Rowe, Antonio Barbosa, and Amaro de Gaspar Vietnamese language. The Rowe, on the other hand, used the Portuguese Romanite authority to write a Vietnamese catechism. Uh, he did two things. He, he write in a, a Western nice uh, critical based essay and at the same time because of his word choice he he joined together for the first time the formal and informal register of Sino Vietnamese and Vietnamese language. Thank you very much for your listening.